Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tractor Man 44. You know, no good deed goes unpunished. And uh, to prove that fact here, I'm in my father-in-law's basement. Oh, I don't know, about nine, ten years ago or so, uh, I put in a new furnace for him. Put in a condensing uh, furnace, fired with natural gas. And uh, it's had a couple of issues, you know, over the years. I think I had a circuit board go bad once. Uh, but that was no problem. It's under warranty. Uh, not, not a big deal. I think this particular one has a 10-year warranty on the circuit board. Uh, he called this afternoon and the uh, furnace wouldn't fire up. So we swung by to take a look. Let's take a look inside here and I'll show you what we got. Of course, now this uh, this looks like a barrel of spaghetti. And it kind of is. But it's really not very, very difficult at all. It's got a pretty much a standard circuit board. You know, it does all the normal things. got the standard algorithms for a 90% condensing furnace. By 90% condensing furnace, you mean that uh, that it drops the flue temperature or removes what's referred to as the latent heat of vaporization to where the temperature of the flue pipe is so low that the flue condenses the moisture that would normally go up the chimney and look like fog coming out the, the chimney pipe. Uh, it reduces that to condensation and takes out the standard drain, you know, and right out down the floor. Well, that comes by the way they meter the, the amount of air that goes into it uh, and meter the amount of gas that goes to it. Uh, and it's also got a, what they call a secondary uh, condensing coil down here on the very, very bottom. And that's the one that actually wrings the tremendous amount of heat out of that flue gas. Your flue gas on a furnace would normally be 450 to 500 degrees thereabout on natural gas. And this will wring that, that uh, heat out of it down to where it's about 110 degree uh, flue temperature which is why you pipe these in in PVC flue. This is incoming air, outdoor air, and this is actually the flue gas. So uh, what happened is we've got pressure switches uh, that have to be made, the circuit has to be made, uh, to prove to the circuit board that the combustion air fan is running and that it's actually running and good enough to, uh, to get the, 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 the combustion process accurate. Uh, and if, for whatever reason, there's not enough air passing across the pressure switch on the suction side of the fan or across the condensing coil or the secondary coil in the furnace, what it'll do is it'll send the signal or it'll open the circuit going to the circuit board and the circuit board will go into a, a shutdown because it says there's not enough air. Well, the same thing happens if you have a faulty pressure switch. If you have a faulty pressure switch that's unable to, no long, to uh, any longer complete the circuit whenever the negative pressure is applied to it, then it's going to go ahead and drop out that portion of the circuit and the algorithm uh, in the circuit board then tells it, you know what, time to shut down. Uh, you're not going to get any heat until the problem is fixed. So the first thing that you do when you suspect you know that you've got a, a faulty pressure switch is make sure that what that pressure switch protects, be it the flue pipe for blockage or be it the, uh, the condensing coil in the bottom portion of the furnace, if it's partially blocked, that's going to affect the way the pressure switch operates too. And also in this particular case, a blocked drain can even cause problems with the pressure switch. So once you eliminate those factors, then you go about the process of testing the switch itself. And this particular pressure switch is wired on normally open contacts, which means you put an ohm meter across it and you'll get no reading whatsoever. But when you exert negative 1.3 inches of water column pressure, on this tube where my finger in the back is touching, when that fan exerts or sucks on that enough to develop 1.3 inches of negative water column pressure, then it'll close this switch and allow the, the circuit to receive the information that says it's safe to function and operate. This particular switch here has a faulty switch internal of the actual switch itself. So this is faulty, supply houses are closed, I get to come to town tomorrow, and uh, get a replacement from the supply house and install it. And so like I said, just a quick little blurb to let you know that no good deed ever goes unpunished, you know what I mean? Uh, but this is very minimum, minimal item, not very much of a cost at all. And uh, I'll swing by supply house in the morning about uh, 8 or 8.30 or so, pick it up and swing back by here and fire it up. I'm just going to leave my tools in the basement. I don't need to take them home anyway. I'm not going to do anything else tonight. Good morning everyone, this is Track Command 44. Um, as promised, I'm back again this morning with the replacement part, and you can see it. I'm snaking the screwdriver right inside to where that pressure switch is, right back there. Uh, it took about 15 seconds, 20 seconds to, to install, and I turned the power on. Of course, it went through its checkout procedure and then started right up, uh, which I knew it was going to do. Um, I, I kind of went through a portion of the, the sequence in the circuit board, but certainly not all of it by any stretch of the imagination. 
But one of the things I want to stress and point out is you can see there's a pressure switch here and another one over there. They're not interchangeable. They both operate at different, uh, different pressures. These particular ones operate on negative pressure, meaning there has to be enough suction uh, established by the combustion air fan in order for those to close to send the signal to the through the circuit board so the algorithm in the circuit board will allow uh, the, the heat process to initiate. And there's also a sequence in the algorithm that prevents you from, if you have a defective switch, simply pulling the wires off and jumpering the wires. Because what will happen on a call for heat, it'll recognize that those normally open switches are closed, sending a signal to the board at the improper time, and it will still go out on pressure switch failure. So it's, it's, they try to make it as foolproof as possible so people cannot bypass and jury rig uh, these furnaces. So, like I've been saying, we got this one beat to death, this track man 44. I am out of here.